Good evening. Thank you for joining me on a Sunday evening. Uh, it's an unfortunate topic that we need to continually uh, speak about. Um, reality check was the other day that I was speaking to an individual and realizing that just two short months on uh, March 13th, we will be in this for three years now, which is very difficult to believe. So um, I feel bad for your children. I feel bad for you. I feel bad for the members of our school district that come into work for this every day. But um, we're going to continue to pay very close attention with surgical precision every single day to make sure that we provide the safest environment for you, your children, your families, and your loved ones. Please, please keep it on mute. So very first thing I'm going to give you a quick update is uh, particular numbers in each school for um, for your children that go to particular schools. So at Hanover Green, uh, in the last two weeks, last 14 days, we've had 10 positive cases. Lee Park Elementary School, six positive cases. Memorial Elementary School, three positive cases. Linwood, three. And our junior, senior high, 55 cases in the last two weeks. Um, these numbers, again, are, um, are, are, we did 14 days and I will tell you the regulations by the Department of Health and Education as to um, how each building is its own entity. Next slide, please. So the next, this is what I was just speaking of. The Pennsylvania Department of Health and Education uh, makes every single building within every Pennsylvania school district its own entity. So um, within the Hanover Area School District, we have five buildings. Each building has to have its own percentage of positive COVID cases in order to have consideration for shutdown or educational format changes. So for example, if you see the last star there, 5% um, of the total student population is testing positive within a 14 day period or uh, double that 10% of the student population within 30 days. So I want everybody to understand that this is not necessarily a district-wide decision. If something's happened at Lee Park Elementary School, it doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have the same outcome as, as the high school. So I want everybody to understand that every building is its own entity, it has its own data, <clears throat> and we will make their own decisions for each individual building based on the need. The preventative measures that the Hanover Area School District takes in uh, on day in and day out, we sanitize every buses. We utilize buses for the same routes uh, every single day. We have staggered start and stop times. So we utilize the same buses as a cost saving measure to this district and to the taxpayers. So we, we sanitize our maintenance and custodial department sanitizes each seat and every single bus in between every single stop. We have regular testing from unvaccinated staff members once per week to make sure that the, that the spread is minimized or the spread is controlled or proactively sought out. The next thing is mandatory. This was implemented over the holiday break, mandatory testing of our athletes. So as we're mingling with other school communities and athletic competitions, we are making sure that we're not bringing cases from other school communities into our, into our school community uh, in the form of proactive testing at least once a week. The next thing is desk shields for our classrooms. It's an added layer of barrier between your child and the student to the left, right, front, or back. So um, masking. Masking is something that we, um, we, we require every single minute of the day with the exception of the lunch periods. And then when the lunch periods take place with the, with the masks down, we make sure that there's a trifold desk shield in between your child and the next. We have regularly scheduled cleaning procedures of high touch points, uh, door knobs, light switches, so on and so forth. Everything that is a high touch point for your child to the next child behind them. We have regularly scheduled cleaning routines that make sure that we, we touch these, uh, we, are, we are sanitizing these areas. In the evening time, we are sanitizing each room. And then we also have the last bullet point there, seating charts on buses, classrooms, and cafeterias. And this is for the uh, identification purposes of contact tracing. The latest measures by the Hanover Area School District is um, we now have uh, immediate testing. Uh, we have the rapid antigen tests available to the families. We have put the link on our website. You simply go on there, 
give authorization or a request. Please mute. Nathan, you're muted. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So, um, the rapid antigen test is readily available to all parents every single moment of the day. So you, you would simply go on to our website, submit a, a request or an authorization form for your child. And then that would give our medical staff, which is our school nurses, the ability to test your child. It's a proactive stance by the Hanover Area School District to proactively seek out positive cases to make sure there isn't a widespread issue within every single building. The next thing is we are actively seeking vaccination declarations. That is also a link on our homepage. Um, this is very easy for folks to go on there, upload a photo of the vaccination declaration card. Um, and, and we made sure that we put uh, on here as a notation. Uh, now, if you're eligible for the booster, that is the only time you're considered fully vaccinated. If you have had the two shots, and you are eligible for the booster, it means that you are not fully vaccinated at this point, okay? And then finally, the newest measure from on the Hanover Area School District webpage is a positive case submission form. So if you know this weekend somebody tested positive, please simply fill out the form, send it in, uh, electronically we receive it, and then we can begin the process of backtracking, whether it's close contact tracing, um, whether it's just planning for your child's education, how it's going to be carried out. And um, once you have a positive case or your child's uh, considered a close contact, we simply switch the educational format to Google Classroom. So there's, there's a seamless transition uh, between um, the positive case and the educational process. So there, there's, there's no lapse in time or your child's not missing any material. The next thing is the new guidelines by the state. So this is the state and the uh, Center for Disease Control. So a positive individual, um, five days in the onset of symptoms, the, the uh, folks now testing positive only need to be five days out. If there's zero symptoms after that, they may return with the mask on, um, but they need to be fever-free and symptom-free in order to return after that fifth day. So that's the new first regulation that is new for us at the Hanover Area School District because we strictly adhere to the Center for Disease Control um, guidelines. The next thing is a household contact. Before in the past, this was 20 days because we needed 10 days for the virus to emerge and then 10 days for it to subside. But now it's five days in, five days out, a total of 10 days of household contacts. Um, for the, for the first date of quarantine. And then close contacts. This is what most families are receiving calls about. This is your child was sitting close to somebody that tested positive. It's now five days from the last date of exposure. So we're trying to shorten these windows um, and try to get the, uh, your, your children um, uh, with the least amount of interruption as possible. Next thing is level of educational delivery. And this is something that we have been um, going over since the beginning of the year. And we were on level one, we were on green for a period of time, which was a full return of students in the classroom using desks, shields, and masks. Unfortunately, as these numbers continually, rap continually rapidly and rapidly incline, um, we are transitioning to the hybrid model for parent comfort requests. So this is, um, I I've listened to folks, I've, I've heard your concerns, and I hear it on both sides. So families want their children in school. They feel they don't function well on the online format. Well, we're going to offer that to the members of our community and also the folks on the opposite side of it that are feeling uh, a sense of discomfort sending their child onto a bus, into a classroom. Well, we're, we're going to um, accommodate those requests as well by having you in the online format, and that begins tomorrow. So we're currently in level two. The next thing is um, specific to students that are going to uh, utilize the online format. So um, we're going to be utilizing the Google Classroom uh, uh, format that we have been utilizing throughout the whole pandemic in the, the 2021 school year. We're simply shifting that at, to that online format. Um, and then the next thing is um, the attendance piece. 
You're going to have attendance taken daily at all the elementary schools. Once you get to Linwood Elementary School and beyond at the high school, it will be taken by the period. Okay, so every single period there will be attendance taken. You will be updated as to if your child's missing classes. If they're online, they're not logging on, you, you will be able to log on and see their attendance per period. The next thing is for folks that are gonna utilize the online portion throughout the remainder of January, every single Wednesday for the next three Wednesdays, um, there's gonna be pickup points and distributions on Wednesdays from 11 to 12 at both the high school and Memorial Elementary School. Um, you will get several servings of breakfast and lunch to help you and your family get through uh, this difficult time as you don't want them around others. And I, and, and I get that. So um, the, um, the next thing is um, once you have received the online format uh, registration form on Saturday um, and you filled that out, this is the format that we are going to be um, utilizing for the rest of the month. So if you chose online, you need to remain online, okay? It's very difficult for our teachers and administrators to have kids coming in one day and not the other. So the format that was chosen and filled out on Saturday, we need to stick with that till the remainder of uh, the, the end of January. So um, we will host an identical session like this in about two, two and a half weeks. And we will um, begin to tell you the process if the community is becoming healthier um, to get your child back in school, if you choose to do so. And then if not, we, we will, we will, um, we will lead you in the right direction. So, um, so that's that. The in-person is not going to change. So your child's going to go to the bus stop tomorrow morning. You will send that, you, you will send your child there. Lunch will be as normal. Um, dismissal, start times, everything, nothing is going to change. Um, just the, the masks are going to continue to be a mandate and we're set to receive a whole shipment of new desk shields tomorrow. So um, you will get updated and better desk shields at some point tomorrow. And if it's not uh, in a timely fashion tomorrow due to the weather, then you will have them this week. Um, and again, attendance will be taken as it normally is uh, by the day or by the period, depending on what school. Okay, um, the only difference between the hybrid fashion for in-person and online is the fact that you could be in-person and switch to online due to quarantine or positive cases, but we can't do the inverse. So, um, so if you have to, due to health reasons, switch, then um, this is the only way. It's, a one, it's one direction here. So, um, that is my presentation. I hope I covered all bases here. And then we'll go to the chat here. Um, I saw somebody asking it is synchronistic. We are going to be simultaneous. The teachers are going to be available there. Check with you at the beginning of the period. Um, get everybody on, 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 um, on track with the students in the classroom. And then, you know, you have the availability of the teacher. And most certainly by the end of the period, you will be, um, you will be, uh, receiving some form of feedback. So um, I will open it up. I'm just gonna read some stuff in the chat here and then open it up to uh, just hit your raise the hand icon and then we'll we'll take it from there. But um, yes, the form is on the Hanover area. There, there are several forms on the Hanover area homepage. Um, and then let's see here. Students in classroom going. So yes, yeah, the students, the way that they're carrying out their education as at this point, whatever the teacher's preference is, if they, they utilize their computer in the classroom, then that's the way it's gonna continue on, okay? Okay, so uh, Rose just asked if um, they could keep their son home the rest of, yes. So you go on to our, um, go on to our homepage on the, on the website and there's a, a form particular to the school that your son goes to fill that out and request to stay home. But um, Mrs. Uh, Kitchen, if you wanna start calling on names here. Okay, we do have a question from Rose. Hi Rose. Hi, Mr. Barrett. Um, I'm just wondering if the kids tested positive at the, um, when you did the testing last week, was that counted or do we need to fill out the, the positive? No, know, so we have that. 
no, that's all into our system. That's into our database. So we're good. You didn't need to do anything beyond that. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, we have a question from Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi. Um, I have a, my question is, so last week you were 100% virtual. What changed from last week to this week? Like, cause I, I've been watching and obviously at my place of employment and the COVID numbers are increasing and not decreasing. So I don't understand um, the concept of last week being virtual and this one having the hybrid since the numbers are actually increasing. Growing, growing. Yes. That's a great question. And it, it was, it was a question I was definitely expecting this evening, Susan. And um, last week, the numbers that were coming back from holiday break were through the roof more than I was comfortable with um, to bring any student back into any school. Every single building had more cases than I was comfortable with. Did we hit the 5% in 14 days or the 10% in 30 days? Uh, we were close, but I was very, very fearful. If we didn't do the testing that we did, the drive-through testing that we did on Sunday, that we would have an unknown amount of cases coming into our buildings. And I'm very thankful because we proactively found 30 cases that were set to come back on Monday. And that was people who were proactively enough seeking a test. And so you can imagine how many people unknowingly, maybe perhaps they were in asymptomatic, um, that would have sent their kids as well. So we, had a, we would have had 30 positive cases coming into our buildings that we knew of, um, plus the unknown factor. So I felt it was irresponsible of me or negligent of me if I allowed that to knowingly come into the building. So with that being said, you combine this, Susan, with the new CDC regulations of five days. So this is the answer. This is the pivotal piece that is going to answer your question. I only had five days to quarantine those kids. And Sunday to Sunday was seven days. So at some point, I have to begin this miserable trek back into the school. So at any point, I got to choose a five-day period to get back into this mess. So, um, and that's exactly what it is. And, and, and I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm just being truthful with you. So there's no point better than right now to try to get back in on these five day quarantine periods and to see if our building's numbers start to get to the 5% to shut down in each building or 10% in 30 days. And then I will act accordingly to that. Please tell me if that whole spiel I just gave you made sense. Yeah, yeah, that made sense. So there is the possibility that, you know, based on how many students go in this week and if people um, get tested while they're there due to having symptoms, not feeling or whatever, this may all change come next week. Even abruptly, though- you know, Abruptly, this could, this could change tomorrow afternoon. Okay. I, I could have people come back into school and, and parents say, you know what? My son or daughter is, is not, you know, they don't seem right. And you submit the form to be tested. And all of a sudden, Lee Park Elementary School is beyond the 5% that we're comfortable with. I got to I gotta shut that building down. Okay. So this this is all knee jerk. And, and I'm, I'm glad that everybody's on here because I want folks to know this. We may shut the lights off in a hurry on this. And this isn't Nathan Barrett or Hanover Area School District or our Board of Education. This are state and federal regulations. Oh, yeah. Nope. Totally understand. So I thank you for that question, Susan. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Okay, we have a question from Bill. Hi, Bill. Bill, you there? Okay, we can come back to Bill. We have a question from Adriana. Hey, Adriana. Hello. Um, I had a question about um the the uh the shot clinics. Will the school be offering a booster shot clinic like they had shots over the summer? Negative. No. We, we, there's we 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 hosted those for convenience because the shots were so scarce. But I, I'm I'm mindful of the fact that most pharmacies are running shot clinics right now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Bill, are you there?
Okay, Mr. Barrett, I don't see um, Bill coming on, but we did have some clarification on if they filled the form out on Saturday in the chat and they changed their mind, can they just go in and resubmit the form or should they notify the teachers? Um, well, if, if they change their mind, they want their children to come back into school, then what to do is send their child tomorrow. They, I, I believe every single school was set up for online only. So um, they can resubmit and change, uh, say that they changed their mind. And when their child shows up tomorrow, we'll know that that's the obvious answer. But, um, you know, I, I appreciate them making the attempt to try to stay in communication with us. Okay, we have a question from Jenna. Yes, hi. My son's hi, in kindergarten. Um, and I got a message from his teacher, Ms. Karish. Mrs. Karish, okay. about homework. Now, because my son's not going in, how are we getting his homework? Do so we go I'll to do, school? Um, you know what I'll do? I'll have the principal and teachers reach out. Um, well, I'll have the principal reach out and come up with some type of format, okay? okay. I, I don't have specifics. I want teachers to be able to feel comfortable in their own procedures. So um, I, I will be able to get you that information this week. Okay. Or tomorrow, tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Okay. Just so I know so, because I got the message from her that the kids that are going in, they have to send the homework in, but Got he's it. not going in. Okay, and I apologize, I don't have that answer right now. That's okay. As long as I figure out something, because yep. I don't we'll want to- the, we'll, we'll get you the answers. What's, okay, all right, I'll, I'll get I'll get in touch with you. Send right. me, you know what, I'm gonna put my, my email in the chat. Do you have okay. access to email or no? Yes. Okay, so I just, if you would, please send me your child's name, okay? Okay. It's right there in the chat right now. I don't know if you can see that, but- um, Yes, I can see it. Okay, send send me your child's name. So I'll, I'll, okay. I'll be able to get to the bottom of first thing in All the morning. Right. All right, thanks. Thank you. We have a question for Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Michelle, do you have a question? Okay, Bill. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes. yes, Bill. Okay, I apologize for that. Um, I have a question about the, if, if we choose to, to keep the child home, will the instruction be live instruction like it was during the hybrid last year? Or is will they just be getting assignments through Google Classroom? The teacher will be online. The teacher will be online. It's going to be a touch and go with the teacher. The teacher's working with the kids in front of them. So please be mindful of that, that they're not going to be in front of the camera at all times. But, um, okay. you know, they're they're going to be on the camera. You know, your child can raise their hand. Their teacher will come back at some point, check. I, I'm not going to tell you that they'll be 100% in front of the camera because mindful that there are children in front of them. Yes. Yes, but they, they'll be able to hear just like the, the children Correct. that are in the classroom. Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, Michelle, are you there? I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, it, so say like they go to school all this week and I have two kids in two separate schools. So if a cases come up in like say Hanover Green, then I have to make arrangements for my son to stay home if we do go to like the following week. That's correct. So if your child's at Hanover grade, we have to shut that down to due to exceeding regulations. Um, yeah, there will be have to there will have to be arrangements made. It's unfortunate that I have to tell you that, but I want to be upfront about it. Okay, because when we when we were told that we were you guys were going hybrid. Like I didn't get the phone call until Sunday. Like, is there any way to get a little bit more, um, like a sooner reminder to, you know, as a parent, we got to make arrangements, you know, not the day before you have to go to school the next day. And, and Michelle, you know what that, um, that is, and, and I own responsibility for that. And I'm going to tell you why, because we had a drive through clinic that ended nearly three o'clock. And when I saw the alarming rates, every family in the Hanover Area School District 
unfortunately had to deal with that because when we saw what was in front of us, I couldn't consciously allow you to send your child back into the buildings with the amount of positive cases. So I know it seemed knee jerk at that time, but that's what I, I needed to do that in order to keep everybody safe, in my opinion. Um, so um, I apologize that it was the day before and there was the decision was not made earlier. It was made at that time when you received it. So it was up, it was up to the minute. Okay. Is there any way like a little bit more for like, a, like a little, like two days before we have to, you know, make arrangements for kids not to go back to school? Yeah. So like what we did Friday. So I'll give you a great example is how I tried to remedy the, the issue that I created for you folks last week was on Friday, the administrative team met. We met bright and early in the morning, got it out to the teachers. Then at that point, we informed the community. So you had the entire weekend to try to make those arrangements. So I was mindful of the fact that I put you in a bind the Sunday before. Okay. I so I, I tried to I tried to fix what what had been created the week before. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, we have a question from Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Hi, I have a question. Um, if I decide to send my son to school this week, can I change my mind and keep him home like next week or the following week? Or is it like you're sending him to school and that's it? I can't change my mind anymore. No, you're, it's it's just as long as it's in the online direction. I can't, I can't no, have no, no. the other way. Yeah, yep. if I send him to school on Monday, I send yes. him to school tomorrow, I can't change my mind then during the week and say, wait, I want to make you, online you school instead. You could. So um, on the website, on the home page, uh -huh. is an online form for each building. So, Patricia, if you don't mind me asking, what school is, is your child at? He's in the high school. Okay, so there's a there's a form for particularly for the high school. So you just go on, fill that you request online instruction at the high school. Boom, that'll kick it to our administration, and then we'll inform the teachers from there. So I can change my mind at any point. If I feel it's unsafe and I want to keep him home, I can Correct. do that. Correct. Okay. Because, I, I mean, he wants to go back, but I don't. You don't I'm feel comfortable. Sure. Right. I don't. So if I send him just to make him feel comfortable and then I change my mind, I can definitely do that. You sure can. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you. Rose, oh, no. you have another question, Rose? Hi. Like H-I-G-H, how, how would you say? We have Rose? a question from Rose. Is that what we said? Yes. Rose, do you have a question? Hi. Hi, Rose. Okay. Um, my question is, I fill out that paperwork, and then does anybody know what time we're supposed to be online tomorrow? It's the exact same time that your child, there's nothing going to change to avoid confusion. Okay. And also, um, as far as uh, I heard somebody else ask about um, homework, do you think there will be arrangements, maybe one day a week that we can pick up the homework or... I'm going to, I'm, if, if you don't mind, um, at some point tomorrow, if you could ask that in the Google classroom, I don't have that specific, um, right now, but, um, you know, that's going to be up to the teacher's preference. Okay. So when we go online tomorrow, sometime, like you said, the, we're going to be live in the classroom. So we're going to be able to hear what's going on in the classroom. That's correct. And the teacher will kind of like be, they're going to be all over. I, I feel so bad for them. Um, you're going to be all over the map tomorrow. Uh, so they'll, they'll, they'll check on us from time to time just to see if we have a question or need anything. And then this way I, I can get a hold of her and just ask her what she wants me to do as far as his assignments, like his paper. Yeah, I'd send a message. I'd send a message so that, you know, whether an email, an email is probably the best. And then when your teacher gets to it, um, due to the fact that it's going to be a little chaotic getting back used to this format, um, that she, he or she will respond um, when, when they get when they get the opportunity. Okay, and that form is on the main page somewhere. For the format or for the homework? For this for the stay at home, will we have to fill? Oh out? yeah, yeah, that's on the that's on the main page, uh, on our web page, right on the home page there, and then you choose you look for your child's school. Um, okay. There's one for each school. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. 
You have a good day, Ross. You too, bye-bye. Rachel, do you have a question? Good evening. Um, I have a question about enrolling into Hanover Virtual. I have three children. Um, one of my children already are doing the virtual and I would like mm -hmm. to enroll my other two students. Do I have to wait until the new marking period or may I do that now? No, I'm, I just put an email in the chat. Could you, do you have the ability to see the chat right now? Yes. Okay, Dr. Pugh is in charge of our virtual academy. Um, send an email with your request and that should be conquered in the next day or two. She's, uh, she'll, she'll get back to you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Cassandra? Hi, I just have a quick question. Will the parents be updated like maybe weekly on the cases in each building? Like maybe this week it's three kids and I feel comfortable sending my son, but maybe next week there's 15 and is there, is there going to be anything like that? Sure. sure. So um, what, what we've been doing is if there's a case in the building that directly affects your child, we've been in contact. So I could come up with some type of remind text to send something out building specific. That so um, yeah, I, I will, I will make sure that parents are up to you know, abreast of everything. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Michelle, do, are you on here? Did you still have a question? Michelle Okonski? Yes. Okay. Aaron, Aaron Mahoney. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Hi, Aaron. Um, my question is I know the athletes and cheerleaders are being tested tomorrow when they go back to school. Um, if there's an overwhelming number of positive cases. Is there a chance that it will switch back to hybrid due to that? In in a particular building, or are you talking about in sports? Well, well in, in the high school, my daughter goes to the high school. She's a cheerleader. Mm -hmm. And now I was informed that um, all the athletes are being tested tomorrow during win period. All athletes in the, in the school, including the cheerleaders. Now, if there is an overwhelming number of positive cases from the weekend, what is that going to do for the kids that are negative or if are they going to transition to hybrid because of that? If there are numbers that exceeds 5% of this total student population, we shut the lights up at the high school. We go, we go virtual. Okay. That's, that, that, is the, that is the proactive stance of the testing. That's the purpose of the testing because we're mindful of the fact that every student may be out mingling within the community, but our athletes are, are, are definitely um, co-mingling with other school communities during athletic competition. So when right. they get into the building, that's why we're proactively testing. Okay, because I know my daughter's had so many COVID tests done and it's actually starting to affect her. Um, mm -hmm. She's getting a lot of headaches from it. And because she literally has had about 15 to 20 COVID tests done. COVID and, will COVID will have its effect too, so we want to make sure we know. Right, she's had she had COVID during the summer mm -hmm. already. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that if they're testing them all the time, is that going can that really affect them to the point? I don't of, think any more than COVID will. So uh, okay. we, we, we're not we're not getting any any type of um, indication that it would. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Lisa, do you have a question? Lisa A. Okay, Edward. Yes. Hi, sir. Uh, I have a question. My daughter goes to the career uh, technical school. Yes. Um, does she go to that school and then stay home or just keep that's, her home all day? That's a great question, Ed. Uh, when we were just trying to iron this out as of 6.30 this evening. So uh, of course I want you to have the option to keep your child home. So right now, tomorrow, you're going to get students at CTC in particular are going to get a very specific um, set of instructions tomorrow because what we have to do is we have to find out the bus stops to be picked up and that stuff has not been ironed out by our bus company yet um, because we did this Friday. So we're still trying to iron out. So I don't know if you want to transport your child, if you have the ability. If you don't, 
we understand and that's on the district right now to fix this but um if you want to transport to CTC and then bring your child home in the safety of your home, they, then just communicate with the district at this point. Uh, I'm just probably going to keep her home uh, if okay. that's allowed. All righty. Yep. Sounds, sounds good. good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. We have a question from Alex. Uh, good evening, Mr. Barrett. Uh, in regards to just to get a clarification uh, in in person and hybrid, will uh, just to clarify, will the teacher be teaching both? They'll be uh, be focused on the hybrid uh, students online and in the in person uh, students in the school. Uh, my concern is that the, the teacher will be juggling uh, two two different aspects of teaching and not be focused on 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 the students of. Uh, vice versa, online or in person. So, yes. So that's why I, I, I made sure I, I don't know if I was clear before. I want to make folks on this call understanding and mindful of the task that these teachers are, are being asked to do tomorrow. And this is purely for parent concern requests. Okay. So the patients has to be more so on the parents to understand they do have children in front of them. They are themselves in harm's way um, with the virus. And, but yet we're, we're, we're going to make sure that your child is receiving the live instruction. And then the feedback may not be readily available like we would like it. So um, all I'm asking for is a little bit of patience um, from folks and I'm, everybody's been mindful and, and so unbelievably amazing over the last two school years. So um, I, I don't want that to come across that you have not been. Um, but the bottom line is, is that tomorrow is day one back on this bumpy road of education. So um, if we could just be patient and the teachers got into a beautiful full swing uh, in the last year. Or so um, they just need the ability to work out the kinks over the next couple of days. Yeah, I totally understand that, Mr. Barrett. Um, I just my concern is those students that, that require special needs or special attention from the sure. teacher. Uh, clearly, this is a daunting task. And again, I appreciate the efforts of, of all the staff and, and, and all the tough times you're going through right now. And, and, and believe me, we're grateful. Um, but I just am concerned with uh, special so, needs students uh, that may need uh, a specialized focus from the teacher. And uh, you know, the teacher will be juggling uh, two aspects of the teacher. Sure. And Alex, um, I'm glad that you brought that up. And first of all, I want to be, but not skip over your kind words. So I appreciate that. And, uh, and I, I will thank you on behalf of our, our of our staff. So um, thank you very much for that understanding. So um, the, the piece of the special education department will analyze the kids um, that we feel should probably be in person, that maybe the, 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 um, virtual portion might not be the healthiest or the strongest means of delivery. So we will have tailored made instructions um, for those families. And, and, um, and if you don't hear from the district and you feel that as a parent and you want to come to us first, feel free to do so. Um, but obviously we know that if you're out um, in virtual, then you're uncomfortable having them in the building. So I, I want to be use my common sense as well. So um but anything you need, please just keep us in the loop, okay? Very good. Thank you again, uh, Ms. Barrett, for everything you do. We'll, we'll be in touch via email uh, with any future concerns. Thank you again. Have a great night. Krista, do you have a question? Hi, uh, my question is, my daughter goes to Hanover Green. Do you know the percentage of COVID cases in that school? So we had single digits. So, I mean, it was less than a percent. So, but uh, let's go back up there. So 10, uh, there's three, I think nearly 300 children there. So out of 10, out of 10, stu 10 students out of that, that number of uh, full population up there. Okay. Laura, do you have a question? Okay, Rose. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I just had a question. If we happen to have a snow day, what's going to be the procedure then? We all go on hybrid or is it going to be a day off? 
That, that's a great that's a great question. No, we have something called flexible instruction days. OK, so um, if we did get a snowstorm, which, you know, if we if we fast forward today until tomorrow morning, we would have been out of school. So um, everybody would have went virtual. So please, everybody on this call, make sure your child always has their Chromebook during from now until the end of March, possibly um, we, we could have to pivot our, our educational format. Uh, based on weather. So um, please always make sure that they're bringing their Chromebook back and forth. Okay. That's a great question, Rose. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have Laura, Laura Podlap. Do you have a question? Hi, Laura. Okay. How about Jenna, Jenna Myers? I'm sorry. I forgot to ask this earlier. Um, for the lunches, I don't drive, my husband does, and he works. So how can I get their food? Man, we're gonna have to figure this out. We, 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 you know, send me, you have my email. You're the one that took I, my email, right? Yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's talk about this, give you some confidentiality here, okay? Okay. Okay, I thank you. Okay, we just have Michelle, uh, Lisa, and Laura. This is Okonski's. I, I think she said she cannot unmute. I got an email yes. here. Yes. So, um, um, so Mrs. Olkonski, could you possibly put it in the chat? I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to, to ask your question. Uh, I see Tammy here. While we're waiting for Mrs. Olkonski, um, Tammy states that, it, and it, this was something that was... Um, this was something that was recommended in the um, Hanover Area School District requests earlier in the presentation. If your child is sick and it doesn't, it could be, you know, stomach bug, whatever it is, just keep your child home and send an email to the teacher. And because of the fact that they have so many students on the Google Classroom, you'll have the ability to log in and not miss a day of school. So at this point, I wanna encourage people to do that if you're sick, we are, our attendance should be at a hundred percent right now because everybody, we have more flexibility now after this pandemic than we've ever had. So, um, you know, it, we, we should never be missing school at all, to be honest with you, but, um, please make sure that if your child is sick, just for the sake of yourself, because everything's COVID, we sneeze, everybody thinks you have COVID. So just for the sake of yourself and a peace of mind of everybody else, um, I would recommend keeping your child home. Mr. Barrett, Mrs. Okonski's question is, how in the event of higher teacher absence, how is that going to affect the learning? Yep, so if it, that, that could be another reason. Um, our teachers are not superhuman here. They're, they, they've been acting superhuman by the ability to juggle a lot of these things. But um, if they get sick and we don't have anybody to, um, to cover their classes, then you know we may have to transition to online. I mean, this is... We don't want interruptions in your child's education. If a teacher's able to um, operate remotely because they're sick, um, we will handle that on a case-by-case -case basis. This is not something that we're gonna use as a common practice, but if we do have a staff outbreak, um, you know, then we're gonna have to pivot and do the same thing because you know, the teachers are, are, are our greatest asset. They, they're here to deliver the instruction. So. Um, we have, we don't have the ability to deliver the instruction if the teachers are not able to do it. So um, we will handle that on a case by case basis. Okay, Mr. Barrett, we did have a question from Laura. She was also able to unmute. If her child is on quarantine next week, can she go online for a week and then return to the classroom the following week? Yes, yeah, so we have that in our database. As we do our contact tracing, and we have kids on quarantine, that's all locked into a database. So we know who is um, not supposed to be in the building or supposed to be in the building, so on and so forth. So um, if you do want your child back in the building after the quarantine, we'll certainly send. Them. And we understand why they're not there because um, we actually have a setting within our attendance, uh, our, our attendance tracking is that students are out due to quarantine or, or, or um, their first close contact or so on and so forth. So they're all due to quarantine. So I'm glad that you asked that question too. Somebody else may have that same question. 
Okay, um, Lisa, if you want to put your question in the chat, I will ask that for you. And we do have a question from Susan. Yes, um, I just have one more question. At the beginning of this, um, when you started, you showed what the percentage rate was um, as of last Sunday. Do you know what the percentage rate at the high school is currently? Yeah, it's close to the 5%, but we're not there. Okay, thank you. We would have, we'd be having a different conversation tonight if that was the case. Okay, yeah, because I'm just trying to make a decision um, on- It's close. What, if I that helps you. Them. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Barrett, Lisa's question was, if her son chooses online instruction for VoTech, can VoTech also be done online? So they're working on that right now. Ironically enough, um, our, uh, our CTC um, just sent me an email that they are going to work this week on getting in a virtual format. Now, keep in mind, when you're at a career technical center, these are hands-on students, they're hands-on laboratories. So, um, you know, this is gonna be, um, you know, a bit difficult for these students to conquer what they need. But if it's, um, let's, let's see, see what the CTC says tomorrow, but they just sent me an email stating that they will work hand in hand with us and remain virtual if that's what our students want to do. So what that's gonna look like, that's still being ironed out, just like the transportation up there. Okay, and then we have a question from Michelle Borga. Um, Before we go there, Michelle, could you just okay. pause one second? Okay. Um, I'm going to put my I'm going to put my email in the chat again for that for the family asking about the virtual at CTC. Please send me that tomorrow. Oh, I think I sent this, uh, somebody specific. Okay, hold on one second. Um, I'm going to send this again to the group. Okay, the family that just asked about the CTC, um, send me that in an email so that I can make sure that you're answered tomorrow and that you don't slip through the cracks, okay? Okay, Michelle, it was Michelle, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I do have another question. My daughter was uh, test negative for COVID-19 like, um, like a week ago. And she has a cough. Can she still come tomorrow or I have to keep her home? Well, again, as I said, I encourage folks to stay home. If she tested negative, you know, that, that that's one thing. But if somebody's sick, you know, and I encourage them to stay home, log on. And, and then when, you know, the cough subsides, um, you can send their back in. But if folks are sick right now, just for the sake that everybody's on high alert right now, I think for peace of mind, may, maybe keep her in the comfort of your home. Okay, thanks. Okay, Mr. Barrett, I don't have any more questions. Folks, if there's anybody else uh, out there that has something before we close, I try not to exceed an hour. Um, so we're, we're, we're pushing it here, but we have a few more minutes. If not, I greatly appreciate you coming on and um, I hope we're meeting your needs. Excuse me, Mr. Barrett. Hi, Liz. I like, hi, I would just like to say thank you for doing everything that you can do in keeping our kids in school, especially our student athletes, so that they can still get their um, sports in during this time. So thank you very much. Anytime. All right, Mr. Barrett, there are a few questions in chat. Um, Wilkes-Barre area just put out there going virtual tomorrow. They're mm -hmm. wondering if there's any chance Hanover will be virtual. We would not know that until we tested. We, again, we are testing every building specific. I'm adhering to every guideline by the state and federal government. So I, I will not, um, and, and please don't take this as any sort of disrespect. I will not just shift because other districts are. I, I apologize if that seems uh, that is coming off abrasive. I am gonna adhere to the percentages. And then we had another parent who asked, um, is there any chance you'll be going virtual because of the weather? Uh, if there's something that happens overnight, as uh, we, it has been a long time since we've been in school in winter, um, unfortunately, but um, I try to have everything out by 530 in the morning to you folks. So um, it would just be a matter of shifting to online. Okay. And if parents can't have kids stay home for online schooling, do they have any other options? That was from Mr. Hernandez. Could you please repeat that? Yes, his question is, if parents can't have kids stay home for online schooling, do they have any other options? They could send their child. Home. OK, 
Okay, any other questions? You can post them in chat. Brooke, thank you very much for the kind words. I thank you very much. Very nice of you. My phone. Um, I what I will do is I will send um, somebody in here is looking for a uh, the remind app. So what I will do is um, let me go back up to see who that was. Me Megan from a uh, Megan's iPhone. Megan, do you have access to our social media? Okay. Um, so what I'll do is I will post that. Um, I will post that to um, social media this evening. And if you're already enrolled, just so I don't have an overabundance of enrollment, um, if you're already enrolled in Remind, don't do it. But I'll put it out there for the folks on this that do not have the Remind app. That would be any school closings, any shift in educational formats. Uh, sometimes it's positive news, um, et cetera. So I will post that uh, before the close of the evening. Mr. Barrett, there's a question from Suzanne. Okay. So just to remind that with CTC having the delay tomorrow because of weather, that they will be on a three hour delay and the students will be picked up three hours later, correct? Than their start time? Um, I will have to get that. What I will do is have the high school administration reach out to you. If they're going in three hours later, I don't know if that session is canceled. I believe that session would be canceled. Okay, yeah, because right now it just says that CTC is going virtual tomorrow because of weather. So I just okay. didn't know since, you know, my student, he would come in the building, he would normally get sure. the bus three hours late if right. he is closed. So busing to Hanover since they're going to be coming in the building. So will we have that three hour busing to come in the building for those CTC students? Yeah, so Susie, it would, it would um, I think your session would just be canceled. Okay. Is it the morning? Do you have morning child, a student that goes in the morning? Yeah, he's morning CTC. So normally we would have, you know, our students would just have that bus late to come in. And then if they were PM CTC students, we would have the bus that left the high school and take the kids directly home since CTC was closed. So that's what I was just working on. And I see Aaron just posted that it is a three hour delay. So that's this is Mrs. Shepard I'm talking to. Yes, it is, Mr. Okay. Barrett. All right, I'll be in touch with you. Okay. So and then we'll. Cool. We'll make that, sure that the high school yeah, administration puts it out to everybody. All right, thank you. Okay, you got it. All right, Mr. Barrett, one last question here from Laura Owen. She said, virtual has never been a good option for us because of her work schedule combined with bad internet. If this happens, if her kids are sick, but work is completed on their own schedule, would this suffice as attendance? Negative. We, the, the students have to be in the classes. Okay, hey, Mr. Barrett, I believe that's everyone. Uh, Rose, there should be something on the um, on the home page. It's if you log right on to uh, HanoverArea.org, um, it should be right on there. Okay, uh, specific to your school. And Laura Owens, thank you so much for the kind words. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, stay safe.